All right, so it's day four of my detox. Uh, I feel fantastic, really, feel really good. Don't feel hungry at all. Even my evening soup that I was looking forward to so much on the first day, I can now take it or leave it. I still go for the soup because I've got a big appetite and I like food, but I can take it or leave it. If there was no soup, I wouldn't even be worried about it. Uh, I've even been looking at pictures of food and stuff, looking at raw food books and um, not starving, just thinking, oh, I'm going to have that to eat in a few days, but not worried. So all them people that are thinking about doing a detox but worrying about starving, do not. Trust me, by the second day, you'll be on a roll, you'll be feeling good, you won't even be thinking about food. Now, what's, what's been going on, what's been going on? Oh yeah, I weighed myself this morning. Uh, this morning I was 10 stone, 2 pounds, that's 142 pounds for all the Yanks that are watching. Um, yeah, so I'm down sort of 6 pounds from when I first arrived. So I've lost 6 pounds of waste. Six pounds of fecal matter that has been sitting in my intestine for no good reason, just poisoning my body. Six pounds of shit. Let's be honest, that's what it is. Six pounds of old shit sitting in my body. So I'm very happy about that. Um, passed out a lot of stuff in my colonic this morning, but obviously I didn't film it because I don't want to put you guys off, but you'll have seen some already. Uh, what else has been going on? Now, here's a little... I had a little uh, bulb go off in my head yesterday, but it does it every year. But I'm thinking of going raw, as in eating raw food, not raw meat, raw vegetables and fruit. Now, that sounds easy enough, that's just a salad, but no, I've been reading this book. I don't know if you can see it, but here it is. It's called Raw Revolution, and it's by a guy called Matt Amsden. And this guy, it's not just salad, because that's why I couldn't do raw before, because I'm not into eating salads every day. But these guys make cakes, biscuits, they make bread out of onions and nuts and stuff, and not using flour, not using gluten, because I can't do gluten, very bad for my arthritis, and all kinds of things. The recipes look amazing. And so I'm thinking, I might switch to raw food, because obviously, you know, raw food is better for you in the long run, because when you cook food, you basically destroy all the nutrients that's in it, so it's not even worth eating it, you're just filling yourself up for no reason, and that's why raw food is better for you, and these people are total vegans, now there's no way I'm becoming a vegan, I'm an African, there's no way, I'm going to be still eating my, my, my lamb and my, my chicken, well not chicken, turkey, and... Uh, oxtail, there's no way I'm giving up my oxtail, and there's no way I'm giving up my cow foot, but I'm going to cut it down, moderation, that's what it's about, I'm going to try and introduce more raw food into my diet, um, but to do that you have to buy equipment, right, you, you, you know, you have to buy a food processor, which is not like a normal blender, it's a food processor, it grinds stuff up to a pulp, you can make soups, ice cream, all kinds of stuff using a good quality food processor and you can grind up nuts and grains with it to make pastries out of nuts. I didn't even know you could do that shit. Um, and also you have to buy a food dehydrator which basically dries out food but, could also, but also heats up food at the same time but not like an oven so you don't destroy the nutrients. Go look it up, go google it. Dehydrator, food compressor. Compressor? food processor, and then you'll, you'll, you'll see it for yourself. Uh, now, these things are not cheap. The best quality food processor out there, apparently, is the Vitamix. And the one I want costs, like, $550. And a decent high dehydrator will cost you at least 110 So we're looking at six $700, which is, like, 500 quid for some cooking equipment. Now, if I'm spending that much money on cooking equipment, or, sorry, food preparation equipment, I'd better be preparing some goddamn food. And I'm not much of a cook. I'm a lazy bitch. I'm going to be honest. I'm a lazy bitch. I like to eat out. And I only cook once in a while. I, I'm a good cook. I'm an African. My mother taught me well. I can cook, but I'm a lazy cow. So if I'm going to buy this equipment, I've got to make sure that I'm really... I'm going to commit to this whole raw food thing. I think I should, because since I've been doing this detox, I feel better. My lupus symptoms are much better. My arthritis 
it's calmed down a hell of a lot. I'm a lot more flexible. I'm not in so much pain when I wake up in the morning. I feel great. And I know it's because I'm cleaning all these toxins out of my body. So it's no point me getting back home and then putting the same toxins that I know that are making me sick back into my body. So I definitely need to take a hold of my health. Whether I'll do it or not is another thing. Because obviously everybody's done that. I'm thinking I'm just going to take a, a leap and just order the processor and the dehydrator off the net. Just order it off the internet and just have it sent to my house so when it's there when I get home. So I have to do it. But then having said that, I've done the same thing with ab isolators and all those miracle machines that are supposed to give you a six pack. I've got a load of those in my house that I've ordered and then now they're collecting dust. I'm using them as door stops, using one as a table. Yeah, so. But I've got to be serious. I'm thinking I'm going to be serious. I think I'm going to go raw. Or at least introduce more raw into my diet. This detox is, you know, it's my third detox. And every time I feel fantastic. And every time I, you come back, you know, you come back from the detox with all the best intentions. Yeah, I'm going to go raw. I'm going to eat nothing but peaches and apples for a year. I'm going to do colonics every day. I'm going to do yoga. I'm going to be all zen. And then four weeks later, you find yourself lining up in KFC. Okay, tomorrow, I'm going to do the yoga. So, I want to be serious. Serious. I'm going to take a hold of my health. Watch this space. Okay, I just went to the toilet. And gave birth to a small, dead alien. Out of my butthole. Now, I happened to put a sieve in the toilet bowl to catch the alien. Those of you with a weak constitution, I suggest you look away now. Look at that. That actually looks a little bit like cabbage or callaloo, but I, I tell you it is not. It's a large jelly fried mucoid plaque that's been sitting in my intestine for god knows how long see what these are gloves that's why people i'm going in look at this no oh, that is truly disgusting look at that that's not poo. It doesn't smell like poo. It's got a chemical kind of smell to it. It's absolutely, it's like big lumps of jelly, weird jelly just been sitting in my body. This is it. This gunk. This horrendous sewage. Oh. Okay, there you go, people. You wanted to know what's sitting in your intestine. This stuff like this is sitting in your intestine, making you ill. It's certainly been making me ill. Since I've got rid of this this morning and just now. Since I've been getting rid of this stuff, my joints have been so much better. My uh, arthritis has got a lot better. The lupus symptoms are amazing. I'm actually able to kneel down and get up without pain today, which I haven't been able to do in six months. It's a miracle. And I'm thinking with a good, proper change in diet, i.e. not falling back on the sweets and the crap, and actually eating at least a half, 50% raw food diet, I could actually heal myself of this illness and get rid of this. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay, I need to take these gloves off. This stuff feels disgusting, even through the rubber. I'm out.